Strokes do not discriminate. They affect women and men, young and old. And we learned that at the end of September when our friend and coworker John McGowan had a stroke. Like us, many of you miss him very much, and he very kindly took the time to share his story. Tonight, Corey Atkins takes us for a visit with John in this special report, Surviving a Stroke. Good evening, everyone. Lynn Martinez has the night off. I'm John McGowan for the News Leader. John McGowan is a local icon. He spent more than 40 years bringing us important news stories. We're having our lunch outdoors here at Smoke on the Water. And taking us to some of Northern Michigan's favorite restaurants and, of course, helping run the big show, Sports Overtime. So how's your 21st? Oh, if it was my 21st birthday, it'd be better, but the original big show goes on regardless. But he, like all of us, is human. And he learned that in one of the most difficult ways possible when he arrived at work on September 26th. I was slurring my words and walking funny, and uh, they told me I was going to the emergency room at Mercy. They thought I was having a stroke, and they were absolutely right. John spent two days at Mercy Hospital before doctors decided to transfer him to Munson Medical Center in Traverse City. I got to Munson, and it was fine, and I went for a 40-foot walk Sunday morning in the hallway with a walker. And I was doing pretty good, and I sat up in an in a easy chair to watch the lions, and my arm and leg promptly went to sleep. John's stroke lasted three days and left him with no feeling on his left side. And that was it, and uh, finished my stroke out. Fortunately, not, mentally, nothing seems to have, uh, have happened outside of the fact I had a little slur in my speech. Still, John was left with a lot of work ahead. Two days later, they transferred me down to Munson Rehab. We spent four weeks there on occupational therapy, physical therapy. So basically, they were working on my arm and teaching me how to deal with the stroke and the everyday things like getting food from upper shelves and things like that. Do those help, John? Yeah, I think so. John moved to the pavilions for rehab about two months ago. One, two, three. And we're making a lot of progress. The arm is moving, picking it up. And uh, we're walking down the hallways. Right now, that's my job, is to get the arm and the leg working again. And that job is certainly full time. Imagine it being the hardest thing in the world to do, <laughs> as it's become that. But it's when you do it, you get some satisfaction out of it. John has a very busy day. Um, he has anywhere from three to four therapy sessions, which include physical, occupational, and speech therapy, as well as aquatic therapy twice a week. It is grueling. Three. Yeah, we'll just take a couple steps. Okay. All right. Okay. Just a couple steps, John. But basically, your life revolves around rehab and getting things done there, getting trying to get stronger. He's already checked speech therapy off the list. You could say it's his area of expertise. Or my expectations are higher than theirs. <laughs> Fortunately, my stroke didn't affect me mentally, and I have enough of my voice, about 90% by my by my calculation, I'm about 90% there. Now John has more time to focus on the real physical work of his recovery and the mental strength he needs to get through it. You gain an appreciation for your left hand and, our, and leg because you wouldn't think about doing these things before. And now you have to concentrate 100% on doing simple tasks. And it's quite a job. He's rewarded with accomplishment. Aquatics is giving him the ability to stand and walk with less assistance. It feels good. Aquatic therapy is John's favorite. And it's getting his balance challenged. The benefits of the water with the buoyancy, the turbulence, but primarily the heat is uh, very therapeutic. Stretch that arm out, stretch. Occupational therapist Gretchen Frazier says this battle is very much fought in a patient's head. You have to be able to fight every day to work hard. And again, if you saw what he just went through with physical therapy, uh, he actually said, I don't have anything inspiring to say, but anyone who watched him is inspired. And you're inspired to work hard in everything you do when you realize that just being able to take 10 steps is a big deal. His attitude is contributing greatly to his overall success. And John has a long list of goals beyond that. The first being able to go home. I'm hoping that I won't be in the wheelchair for the rest of my life, you know. And I'm making enough progress that I have reason to be optimistic there. And he would love to take a prominent seat in your living room once again. My main goal was to uh, retire after the sports overtime season next year. 
And so that's still a possibility, I suppose. Uh, if it is, if it is, I'd like to do it. Back, I'd like to get back to a few newscasts before I retire, just to say I did it. Uh, but if that isn't going to be the case, I don't know. Well, I, I can live with that. I think I'm just about done. With but no matter what happens, his northern Michigan family will always hold a place in his heart. And I know there's a lot of people out there asking about me, and that means a lot to me. I thank you for supporting me for so long, and. Uh, it's been a privilege. If I don't get back there, it's been a privilege to, to, uh, to be with you for so long. For Northern Michigan's news leader, I'm Michelle Dunaway. If you'd like to send John a card or note of encouragement, we sure it gets delivered to him. Just send it care of John McGowan to P.O. Box 627, Cadillac, Michigan 49601. We also have that information posted on 9and10news.com.